uh, decided to go for another hike today. So we thought we'd go for a walk in a place near Greenwich. It's called Fowler's Woods and it's um, just off Route 13 south of Greenwich. Really nice place to walk. One of the things that makes this such a nice place to walk is the whole trail is a boardwalk. So uh, last night and the night before we had a lot of rain. A lot of places it'd be wet and muddy to go walk there. Uh, but today, since this has this boardwalk, we, we won't get our feet wet. We don't have to wear boots. A couple things we're going to talk about today is, is first of all rocks. So we've been going on these hikes and I, I think quite a few other people are going on hikes and we're finding these painted rocks. So when you find these, what you do is you uh, take them to another location and, and don't necessarily hide them, but set them somewhere where other people will find them. Then they take them and, and put them someplace else. Van Buskirk girls on North Niffen Street are, are painting these and making them and you can pick them up there um, if you want to pick some up or you can make your own and go hide them. Thought we'd talk about some trees today also, so we thought we'd talk about five trees in less than five minutes. So our first tree today here is, is the poplar, okay, a yellow poplar or sometimes called a tulip poplar. Uh, these trees get really big, they're fast growing. Wildlife doesn't use them a whole lot in Ohio. In other places, beaver like to eat them. But what they're used for in Ohio is, is lumber. They're a, a great lumber for making furniture. Um, if you look at the inside of a drawer on a dresser you have, a lot of times there's a whitish greenish wood that makes up the inside of the part of the drawer and they use poplar for that. Another thing poplar is used for is uh, to make siding on old wooden homes because poplar is pretty uh, rot resistant. So uh, we'll look at four more trees here in a bit. Okay, I thought we'd stop here and talk a minute about one of the first flowers that's really noticeable in the woods. It gets big and it's easy to see. It's called marsh marigold. Um, it's called marsh marigold because it grows in damp places. It's called a marigold because it's related to the marigolds that we plant around our homes. So it's a big bright yellow flower in wet areas. I'll show you a couple pictures of it. Okay, our second tree today is the shagbark hickory. Uh, this tree, it kind of reminds me of Jacob Tock before he gets a haircut, it's kind of shaggy. So if you look at it here in a minute, you'll see that the bark is kind of shaggy, especially up higher on the tree. Shag bark hickory tree is an important tree to know if you want to be a squirrel hunter. Uh, when squirrel season opens up, one of the favorite things that squirrels like to eat is the, the hickory nut on a shag bark hickory. As far as using the lumber uh, to make things out of, it's very popular to make furniture right now. Um, it's also a very good firewood. It has a lot of BTUs and it'll produce a lot of heat when you burn it. Okay, third tree for the day is the white oak. Okay, now if you're a deer hunter, you need to know this tree. Uh, the acorn from the white oak is like chocolate or pizza to a human. The deer absolutely love them. So uh, if you want to find a good spot to hunt deer, find where there's some white oaks. Uh, the white oaks don't make acorns every year. So some years are great places to hunt, some years they're not. The white oaks tend to fall pretty early in the deer season, right when it starts. But if you can find a spot where the white oak acorns are falling, it's just a tremendous place to hunt. As far as the wood itself, it's really strong, okay, it's, so it's, it's great for using in construction to make uh, feeders for cattle or something, or, or gates. Um, it's a good wood to burn, has a lot of BTUs, so uh, just a great tree to know. Okay, one of my favorite places to check out at Fowler's Woods is this overlook. Okay, so this overlook was built to let you see out into an old Kettle Lake, which is where a huge chunk of ice was, and when the ice melted, it left a big low spot. That low spot fills up with uh, rainwater, and uh, brush and stuff grows in it, and it's a very important place for salamanders, toads, and frogs to reproduce. The salamanders, toads, and frogs will attach their eggs to this brush that grow here, and uh, the eggs will later hatch the tadpoles. Okay, tree number four is the American Beach. Um, this is a tree you see a lot of people carve their initials in. Uh, this tree is very important for wildlife. 
Squirrels love to eat the beech nuts from it in the fall, so it's a good place to hunt squirrels. It's a tree that quite often gets hollow, so uh, squirrels and raccoons will den inside the tree a lot. Um, it's not a very good wood, wood for construction. They, they'll use it for pallets and stuff, but it's not real great. Um, pretty good firewood though. Um, it's a good tree to cut down and burn for firewood since it's not so valuable as timber, so American beef. Okay, for the fifth tree, I couldn't decide between doing the ash tree or the red oak. I decided to go with the ash because we, we talked about this one in class. So the ash tree was a tremendous tree for Ohio and many other states. Look at, look at the size of this log. And then the emerald ash borer came to Ohio from Asia and uh, it's like a termite on steroids. And it chews holes through the trees and, and kills all these trees. So you're going to see all these huge logs laying down here and it's, it's all um, American ash tree. And uh, a lot of the ash trees were falling and crushing the, the boardwalk, uh, so it was being damaged. So the state came in and, and cut the trees down. You'll notice they've been cut off with the chainsaw, and they could direct them so it, it wouldn't fall on the uh, boardwalk. The American ash tree wasn't so important for wildlife, but it was a tremendous uh, lumber for for, make, for construction, and it was a tremendous uh, wood for um, burning in your fireplace or a wood burner. It splits real easy and had a lot of BTU, so losing losing the American ash uh, was a big deal for Ohio. Um, they also made baseball bats out of it in Major League Baseball, and so now they have to find another wood to make baseball bats out of, and I've heard they're going to go to hard maple, so we'll see about that. Great big white ash that's still standing. Uh, most of them have fallen or been cut down. And this is only pans up to the top of the tree. Notice how all the limbs are dead. So you don't even see many of these that are standing anymore. There's some fresh cut ash trees out here at Fowler's Woods. And something I would have, I think I discussed in seventh grade is how to count tree rings to see how old trees are. So since there's some freshly cut ash trees out here, you can count the rings and, and see about how old they are. I think this tree is about 67 years old, but there's others you can count too. Okay, in some areas here at Fowler's Woods, in the wet areas, you can hear one of the first frogs that really make a lot of noise early on, and it's called spring peeper. So you've probably heard these before, so just listen to this sound and see if it sounds familiar to you. So hope you enjoyed our five trees. Again, Fowler's Woods is a great place to walk. You can see if you can find that rock we stashed here. And we'll see you next time.